So I'd like to talk a minute about polls. I want you to think about the last time you answered a poll. The last time you did a 20 to 40 minute survey on a landline or on your phone. I want you to think about how often you answer calls from unknown numbers or talk for more than 30 seconds to someone you can tell is calling you from a list. I want you to consider how many people still have a landline to even answer at all. Now I want you to think about the kind of person who does have time to talk to a stranger for a certain period of time and give their opinions on a host of subjects. To be clear, I'm not throwing shade here. I personally try to answer polls whenever I have the time. I want pollsters to know what people like me are thinking. But honestly, mostly I just don't have the time and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in that feeling. But polls are powerful. They're a way for us to express our opinions to our nation's leaders and let the country know what we care about. Polls can also influence our emotions and shape our political system. We feel certain ways about certain polls and our leaders pay attention to poll results and often use them in their decision making. Polls could be used to drum up support for a person or an issue or reveal how closely aligned or far apart people are on policy. But polls have been given a bad name these days. It seems as if they're wrong more often than they're right. But the truth is that actually depends on what's being polled and who's doing the polling. National polls on issues using scientific samplings of the population where the people being polled meet the criteria and are chosen at random from reputable companies like say Pew Research or Gallup or PBS, people who have credentials and track records, those can be incredibly accurate. Polling is actually a science and done the right way, they can be incredibly effective at giving us a sense of the nation's view on something. Think about polls that show us that 85% of Americans believe abortion should be legal in certain circumstances, or 69% believe abortion should be broadly legal in the first three months. Those statistics collected by reputable polling companies and are extremely consistent across companies clearly reflect the will of the American people on the whole. The problem is this doesn't work as well for candidates. Pew Research points out that the 2000 and 2016 presidential election demonstrated a real problem, that national polls can be extremely accurate at identifying America's preferred positions and candidates, and yet fail to identify the winner of the presidential election because of the Electoral College, which we see incredibly clearly when the national popular vote winner was Al Gore and Hillary Clinton, but the winner of the election was George Bush and Donald Trump. National polls gauge the opinions of all Americans, but our elections end up coming down to a handful of voters in a couple battleground states. So national polls can tell us what the entire citizenry is thinking, but the margin of error for how they will actually vote or how the vote will come out is extremely high when it comes to calling a winner. Plus, as technology has improved, it disrupted the way polling is done because the barrier to getting into the polling game has basically disappeared. These days, anyone with a couple thousand dollars can start conducting national polls online. There are now huge groups of people doing polls and surveys without any credentials or track record. Then you have to ask yourself, who paid for the poll? Companies like Pew and Gallup are nonpartisan organizations funded by impartial charitable trusts, or in Gallup's case, it's employee owned. Both function with the mission to inform the public about the issues, attitudes, and trends that shape the world. But now we have polls coming from companies who were hired by right-wing operatives to give us right-wing results or to spin a right-wing story. And instead of vetting these companies, our media is buying these unverified and skewed results because it's good for ratings. The horse race between candidates increases engagement. The Democrats are doomed narrative increases engagement. The narrative that Joe Biden and Donald Trump are neck and neck is a huge moneymaker and it's great for clicks. But telling people the wrong information is a form of voter suppression. If people just assume their candidate is losing or can't win, they might not bother to vote. If people assume their candidate is just going to walk away with the election, they might not bother to vote. And polls have become a huge moneymaker for companies who do them and the pollsters they hire and the media companies who require the engagement to make their ad revenue. But even with all that money floating around, those polls might not actually reflect how the voters are actually going to vote. So I want you to watch who's doing your polls. Take the media and the candidate's spin on poll results with a huge grain of salt. Know that national polls from reputable companies on single issues and public sentiment are probably incredibly accurate. But polls from less reputable companies, or you don't know who did them, or you don't know who's paying for them, telling you how people are going to vote, have a far higher margin of error. Personally, I'd love to hear less about polls and more about issues. Less horse race, more substance. If we weren't talking about polls, we would be doing less Democrats are in trouble in 2024 and more Republicans are coming into 2024 with six consecutive years of election losses and embarrassing underperformances and a leader promising to be a dictator so he can pardon himself of all his criminal charges. I mean, call me crazy, but that's a hell of a lot more interesting than Joe Biden is old. 
Ultimately, we want polls to work. Pew tells us that strong public polling is a key marker of a free society, a testament to the ability of organizations outside of the government to gather and publish information about the well-being of the public and its citizens' views on major issues. In an unhealthy nation, the head of the government tells its citizens what they want. In a healthy nation, the citizens tell the government. At the end of the day, polls don't vote. People do. So as someone more clever than me said, dance like no one's watching and vote like you've never seen a poll.